and welcome to another episode of State of the Art, the show that shines a light on the world of fine arts at Wichita State University. The School of Music made an exciting announcement this summer that they are planning to launch a brand new marching ensemble called the Shocker Sound Machine. Incorporating dance, traditional and contemporary techniques for movement and sound, this will definitely not be your grandfather's marching band. The group has been hard at work getting ready for their debut later this fall. Let's take a look at what they've been up to and where they're headed. The discussions about Shocker Sound Machine began actually at a very primitive sort of stage. We were noticing that a majority of prospective students were telling us that they wanted some sort of a marching band activity. M one of my colleagues was talking about a, an event called WGI Wins and said, well, how cool would that be if we brought that to WSU? I pitched it to a couple of other people and they said, really? Well, if you can figure out a way for us to do that, let's see what happens. Right now, we're in a phase where it's completely open. We want as many students from across campus and in our own School of Music to participate as possible. And we're gonna find a way. That's what we're having to reinvent. So with the stationary ensemble at basketball games, it's cool, but it's just like there's another level to it when they get to move. It's like this way more uh, visceral activity. And I think that's what the students really want. And what we're doing that's different from most marching band things is the winter guard idea. We're doing a lot of body movement, a lot of dance type of things, not necessarily your militaristic, rigid marching style. We're not, we're not your old school marching band at all. I just wanted to play my instrument. It didn't work out that I could take a music class this semester. So I was like, I'm gonna do this. I need to do this. <laughs> Rehearsals have really been a lot of fun. So it's been really interesting relearning how to march and how they want us to march, and then uh, the grid on the floor is not quite the same. The biggest difference is the size of it, right? A basketball court is nowhere near the size of a football field. It's a little faster pace. We don't have the big sprawling canvas to work with. We have like essentially a tiny little notepad to make a show that's still enticing, creative, and you know, fills the duty of a normal marching band, but in a slightly different way. And so with that, we're trying to take a spin on popular music, use brass and saxophones, and, and really be as flashy as possible. Uh, it seems very unique to me. Um, we have, we've tried to look around a little bit and see if there is a, a collegiate level basketball marching band, and I haven't been able to find one. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's just not very mainstream. We have been designing the uniform since the summer. Um, and it went through several iterations. My whole thing is I need us to try and do something that we haven't quite seen before. I want, I want, it needs to be honoring those older traditions, but it needs to be something forward thinking, it needs to be loud, it needs to be, you know, ours. Basically from any angle in the basketball arena, you will be able to see something interesting from these uniforms. And along that with where we've got new instruments too. And these new instruments are, are made by a company called System Blue. And they're designed specifically for performing outside or for an audience that's not 100 feet in front of your face. I'm hoping that that total package provides sort of a really innovative and contemporary. I mean, it needs to be something that we haven't quite seen before, ensemble. That's my hope. I think what's most exciting is its newness. I come to rehearsal every day and I'm ready to go and honestly like those guys are there every day ready to go. And so that, that's really the most exciting thing to me is the fact that this brand new fresh thing is important to other people and they want to be a part of it. On the whole, I'm most excited for that first performance to just kind of come out and hopefully blow everybody away with the performance that we give and show people this side of the music school that just came out this year and hitting the ground running and giving a fantastic performance. I mean, we talk about learning outside the classroom. Well, what better way than to do something you're not comfortable with? Being more than just the student that shows up is probably a big thing for me. I'm really excited to see how the students embrace it, how the community embraces it, how the campus embraces it, and, and seeing what we can come up with and make something that hopefully is really exciting. We've been given enough resources to do it the right way, which is really cool. That doesn't happen everywhere. You know, this is definitely something to be excited about. And if you're on the fence about coming out and seeing our first performance, I would definitely recommend that you do it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. 
Dr. Shade said the Shocker sound machine is planning to make its first public appearance at a basketball game later this year. For more info about how to get involved or about the band itself, just follow the links in the description below this video. If you've ever been to a theater or musical theater performance at WSU, you know that the performances are top notch, but have you ever looked behind the actors? If you didn't know, most of the sets and prop pieces for every performance are constructed right here by WSU Technical Theater students. We took a rare peek at the place where all the magic happens, the scene shop, where students were hard at work taking scenic design from the page to the stage for the recent musical theater production of Susical the Musical. My name is Jason Flanders. I supervise all the construction for all of the, the plays, the operas, the musicals, for all the scenic and props that we do here at WSU in the School of Performing Arts. And this is where all of that happens, is in, this, in, in the scene shop. Typically I have anywhere from six to eight student employees, and they'll come in and prioritize each individual um, section or project my name is Caitlin Cook. I'm a freshman. My major is a Bachelor of Arts in Design and Technical Theater. I did a lot of theater growing up as a kid, and then in high school I really decided I have massive amounts of stage fright and I'm not going to stand in front of people and talk. Um, so I got started in the background stuff. Uh, right now we are working on the uh, some of the drops and kind of other set pieces for Susical the musical, which will be put on, I think it opens next week. So the set of Susical is a steel jungle gym. The idea is that the actors will be able to climb and jump and do all this stuff on this stage with um, being that it's multiple levels. Um, and then as scene pieces fly in and out, they'll cover certain parts of the set and so you'll have, you'll be put into Whoville, or you'll be put into the jungle. Um, Seussical is a high energy musical based off of the Dr. Seuss books. There's about four or five of them all combined into one, and we follow Horton and the Cat in the Hat and Jojo and all of our favorite Seuss characters and, and on their journey. Um, and it's all music, all dancing, um, lots of fun. What's your first pickup? Q number 10, 2 picks up Horton. Q 10 picks up Horton. Where's Horton? Horton oh, he's center stage. So spot 2, you're going to pick up Horton. He'll be up center. That's where the group lifts him up. I think it offers a huge technical aspect to the show, a creative technical aspect. It allows the lighting designers to really um, um, use their imagination to try to bring us to different worlds. It also allows um, set design to be different and um, exciting and how we can incorporate this set in, into all the different Seuss worlds that we enter. This is a, a project that has a lot of carpentry. It has a lot of rigging. That's everything in the theater that supports uh, and flies in and uh, allows movement of scenery. It's Dr. Seuss, so the painting looks very simple, right? It's, it's primary colors and it's cartoon and it's but it's also Seuss you know it's iconic typically the process is the director meets with the designers and they discuss what the what the world of the play or the world of the musical is and what they want to emphasize and where they want to go and the designers will come up with the uh, uh, the initial designs the renderings uh, and we'll turn that over to the TD who decides that, well, this may be the best way to approach this build. And that's when the drawings come to me, and me and my students take that, we buy the materials, we get, if we need steel, if we need wood, whatever, and then we start building those individual components. So as students came in, and depending on their skill level and where they're at in uh, the welding process or in carpentry process, then I will assign them to Here's this project, work on this, here's that, work on, you're finished with that, move on to this. My name is Jemima McPeak and my major is Design Technical Theater with an emphasis in lighting. For this one, I did a whole bunch of metalworking. And then I did a lot of welding. I'd welded once before this, uh, but then I did a lot of practice because 
I was given the welder, I was given the steel, and uh, I welded a few. They weren't very pretty. So he's like, here, have all of this stuff, just practice. So I spent an entire day practicing. And then now I, I can just go in and weld whatever I need to. So usually most of the set comes over on something called Workday, and that's a Saturday, two weeks before the show opens. And everyone, all the lighting people, all the scenery people, everyone works on just the scenery. So this particular set came over in a lot of pieces, and now uh, throughout the work days we've been welding it together, and welding new pieces onto it. We have pieces uh, out here on the paint frame right now that are so big that they won't fit through the door and into the theater. Nothing can go into Wilner Auditorium that is more than nine feet, seven inches tall. That means we have to do applied mathematics. We have to do Pythagorean theorem, which means we get to say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Do you know what that is? Oh yeah, that's that math thing they say. Yeah, I, I, I took a test and I filled in a bubble on that. Well, come here, let me show you what it means. And we do, we do the, the work of the Pythagorean theorem and they get to figure out what size of scenery can fit through. I think that just everything we do is applied learning. You, you can't build a jungle gym without teaching the process and then saying, okay, here, now you do it. A lot of our coursework and a lot of what we try to teach is to help people think outside of the box and think creatively. And I think that's another advantage that we have, that I'm just not sure how much of that you get from other universities. When you're involved in something like technical theater uh, and working in a place like the scene shop, you learn so many different kinds of skills. And theater is a much more broad world than I think anyone outside of it would ever expect. You learn how to work with wood in so many different ways. You learn how to work with metal in so many different ways. And they're very unique ways because each show is its own world. And for each world, you have to create these weird little different things that you wouldn't have to do in real life. You create things that have never been created out of materials that might not necessarily seem to work, but you have to make them work anyway. It's a lot of fun too. <laughs> Theater is a lot of hard work, but it's so worth it. The design and technical theater degree program includes much more than just set design and scenic technology. Students can also choose to specialize in lighting, sound, and costumes. As a side note, director and choreographer of Suzical the Musical, Daxton Bloomquist, is a WSU alum. He graduated from WSU in 2010 and spent about six years with a Broadway production and national tour of the Book of Mormon. Lastly, if you've ever wanted to showcase that cartoon voice you've been working on since elementary school, or if you'd like to act without the whole being seen part, you're in luck, as WSU Theater is offering a new voice acting course. Director of Theater Brett Jones invited us into the studio to learn more. I've always had a love of radio theater and uh, I discovered that for students it gave them another avenue or a medium for performance. So I've had more and more students that come in that say, you know, I like theater, I'm interested in theater, I want to get the theater degree, but I want to tell you, I really want to do voice acting because there's so many students that come in, big fans of anime and Cartoon Network and Disney, and they are followers of these voice actors and can name them and can tell you about their careers. And that was really, uh, in a way, a wake-up call for me. Yes. because it let me know that students are coming in with different desires and needs and love in the entertainment field. Next on Cartoon Network, more of the Scooby-Doo Marathon. Hey, Scooby, save a Scooby snack for me. And so this fall, we're offering voice acting as a special topics course for the first time. And I think the plan is for the theater department to make it a permanent part of the curriculum and put into the rotation. And so those students are coming in and are working on a variety of voice acting uh, works. And that is going to feed into this podcast that we started. So now with Shocker Studios, we actually have an audio studio that we can take the students in set of microphones. 
and they can work on voice performance. And uh, one of the students in the class edits all the goof ups, it gives it to me, and then I put in music and sound effects and layer that in, mix it, and then produce it. He may look serious, but he's smiling inside. Others have noticed too. Geico has been saving people money on car insurance for 70 years. So, if saving on car insurance sounds good to you, the Gecko will be happy to help. I'm Kieran Philip Shadler. Um, I have, I'm currently a BA in theater performance uh, with a minor in political science. And I'm very, very personally involved in becoming a voice actor. Um, that is my main goal and has been for a number of years. Dr. Brett Jones sent out an email saying, hey, we're going to be adding voiceover, uh, voiceover class, and I just freaked out because I thought that was super, super cool. Just place it right in the center of your lips, Kieran. <laughs> and it takes, it takes the, the P sound, instead of going straight on, it splits it to the sides and cuts that air pressure force. So after we recorded our first podcast in the class for the Stage Stark Audio Theater Productions, um, Brett had said, as someone had asked, oh, how long did it take you? And he mentioned something along the lines of nine hours. And we were like, oh my goodness, that is a, uh, quite a time because he teaches a lot as well. Um, so I had asked him if it were okay for me to uh, assist him in the audio editing process. And he was, sure. He said, sure. Um, so that has helped me a lot because uh, I know how to speak into a microphone as most people do. However, the editing part is something that uh, I didn't really know and I'm very excited that I can be doing that now. Getting ready for prom is like Mission Impossible. Finding the right stuff at the right price can be overwhelming. Sort it out with Teen Magazine's Prom Guide. Then you can have fun. As much as I love theater and voice acting, I love being able to only be limited by your voice. So it's just been something that really inspires me because you can be anything you want to as long as your voice works with it. I would love to see the voice acting class become a permanent part of the curriculum, which is already a plan. And I would really like to market the podcast where our theater program is known for more than just stage work, that it's known for this audio uh, focus as well as the, the film focus too, because that's really, that's the world that we live in. People are drawing entertainment from so many different mediums and sources every single day. And I want our students to be exposed to that so they can be a part of it. As Jones mentioned, some of the work that the students produce in the course will be featured in the podcast, Stage Struck Theater. You can find the podcast on multiple platforms such as Spotify and Apple Music, or you can simply follow the link in the description below this video. That will do it for this episode of State of the Art. As always, remember to subscribe to WSU TV on YouTube. Plus, now you can download the Apple TV or Roku app for the latest episodes and other great WSU video content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.